New Zealand rugby selling off part of itself. This is an ongoing story. It keeps going and going and going. Don't know if you guys have seen the news, if you're outside New Zealand, it's been relatively big news here in New Zealand, uh, that New Zealand rugby are looking to sell off a 12.5% stake of themselves, basically, uh, to a private equity firm uh, called Silver Lake, similar to the way you've seen CVC, if you've heard of them, invest in like the Six Nations and uh, various other competitions, Formula One and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's one that I'm usually pretty hesitant to talk about because I barely understand the game on the field, let alone what goes on in the boardroom. That's that's generally pretty beyond me. Uh, one of the things I hated about my old job was going to meetings about all those interlocking pieces at the strategic level, that, that kind of stuff tends to either go above my head or grow my gears. But um, it is it is pretty big news and it is it is relatively controversial over here in New Zealand. There's a bit of divided opinion as to whether uh, it's a good idea for New Zealand rugby to be selling off the stake to an American investment firm. Uh, worries about what they might do with the stake. Uh, New Zealand rugby keep arguing that they're, you know, they're partners and they're kind of got a good understanding and they're not going to do anything drastic and there's all kinds of checks and balances in place to make sure uh, if they do get this $387.5 million, they're not going to be kind of selling their souls uh, to get it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely an interesting one because the deal so far has been blocked because one of the, the parties that needs to agree is the New Zealand Rugby Players Association and they have not uh, yet signed off on it. They're saying that it's not a very good deal and uh, they're also worried. Um, New Zealand Rugby has countered saying most of the points that they're worried about aren't genuine concerns, that the rugby guys, the players aren't going to be playing more games. We're not going to see like exhibition games against the States and Japan and whatnot all, all the time to increase the workload on the guys. They're not going to cheapen the jersey uh, and all that kind of stuff. And from New Zealand Rugby's point of view, uh, they are saying they need the money to invest. Basically, they need to invest the money at grassroots and provincial level. So that's that's kind of where, where things break down. Um, from what I've seen, and there's a bunch of documents you can read on it. Again, it's pretty maddening. I'd much rather be watching rugby than reading financial reports. Uh, but New Zealand rugby doesn't do that well. Uh, they always have a bumper year during the um, the Lions tours. That's That tends to be a thing once every 12 years. And uh, Rugby World Cup years are a bit tougher because, you know, the, they play fewer games at, at the top level. So uh, less money coming back. But you do get a bit of money back from, from World Rugby at some point. So... Yeah, they, they kind of look to break even. They make a loss sometimes and they make a profit sometimes. But they're not they're not doing hugely, hugely well. Which is surprising and also kind of concerning. Because, I mean, you're essentially the, the biggest brand in world rugby. And they, they, they struggle to make a profit. I do get that New Zealand is a, uh, is a small domestic market. So you can be as popular as you like. But if you've only got 4 or 5 million people domestically to to buy stuff to you know sell broadcast deals and whatnot um yeah that that is always going to be a hindrance so that they're looking abroad uh and especially they're looking to silver lake to try and get some apparently a kind of expertise uh to help them grow their overall revenue so the deal itself like i said it's uh, it's 12.5 percent uh it's technically uh in some new entity called commercial lp which is going to look after all the commercial interests of new zealand rugby um now they are like i said looking for this expertise to what did they say uh to assist with the their growth ambitions they've got the skills and expertise because one of the things the new zealand rugby players association hit back with was basically if you just need money if you're struggling at the moment for cash you should sell 5% of you know, yourselves to, um, to New Zealand people to invest, like mum and dad investors, I guess. Uh, sell 5%, you could raise $155 million. And then you can use that money to invest. And that was rejected by New Zealand Rugby for those reasons, saying uh, there's no, they would lack the skills and expertise to assist with the growth ambitions of the game. So... It seems like clearly New Zealand Rugby sees Silver Lake as able to do something that they themselves can't do, which again is a bit disappointing because 
I don't know, man. Do, do you really need an American company to tell you how to run your business better than you can run it yourselves? Maybe you genuinely do. I don't know. Um, I mean, I know as a guy who's got a YouTube channel, every now and again, you'll get an email from some, uh, some company saying, Hey, we market YouTubers. We can help you with your marketing and social medias and stuff. Just give us a cut of your profits. And I would always show them the big old middle finger. So I need that. I'm happy with my current operations, but, um, that being said, I don't have to pay a bunch of rugby players and that the pay of the rugby players does also seem to be a pretty big issue. Uh, one report said that the uh, the wages of the, the professional players takes up 36.5% of New Zealand rugby's revenue. So it's a big chunk of change. And uh, in one of the interviews, one of the, the panelists from New Zealand rugby was saying about 80% of their money goes into the professional game. So that doesn't leave enough for the provincial and the grassroots game. They're saying they're not going to go bust if they kind of don't get this deal. They're, they're kind of just going steady. But they, they want to be able to do more than just tread water, basically, is what they're saying. They, they need to get that investment at grassroots level. That the, payers, the players will get a pay rise and uh, all that kind of stuff. And um, the Silver Lake guys will be able to generate more revenue from fewer games or the same amount of games. They'll be able to get narratives and, and whatnot. I don't know, man. I mean, Silver Lake, like I said, they've got investments with Manchester City. There was the whole football debacle with that Super League thing. So, I don't know, man. Like I said, I do find that it's a bit disappointing that these guys don't know how to make money out of the All Blacks. But then again, I'm not a businessman, so I wouldn't really understand. Um, uh, the provincial unions, who also need to agree, have unanimously agreed that they would like to take the money. Uh, I'm kind of not surprised because they don't have much money. So if anyone was offering them money, they're, they're not going to say no to, to free money on their end. They're not the ones who have to uh, pay the money back. Speaking of paying the money back, what it does mean, I mean, these guys are not charity. So we'll like not giving this money away for free. Um, they will get uh, 12%, basically 12.5% of uh new zealand rugby's revenue after three years so the first year will be 3.5 percent of the revenue the next year doubles to seven percent and then the rest of it is uh 12.5 percent so they buy 12.5 percent they get 12.5 percent new zealand rugby's average, average turnover is like 200 million dollars i think so yeah i don't know man you guys with more financial sense than me will need to tell me what you guys reckon that's a that's a big chunk of change although that being said the all blacks like i said is a massive brand and it does seem like like with the pandemic it is now not like a bad time to be selling i would have thought like just in terms of your market value at the moment when there's no international rugby going on and international seem limited so new zealand rugby is desperate for more cash isn't now a bad time to sell i don't know how long the pandemic's gonna go and then nobody does so I don't know, if New Zealand rugby aren't in that desperate need, I would have thought kind of like, wait, I mean, I'm relating most of this back to kind of personal experience, right? Like thinking about buying and selling houses or shares or whatever it is. Um, isn't now like the lowest point in your, your value and you're desperately seeking money, so you're going to get kind of a bad price for yourself? That's just what it feels like. I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys reckon? Do you think this money is desperately needed to, to chuck into the game right now. Obviously, as, a, as a, a greater state of the game, I do know that rugby participation numbers are down in some areas. The women's game is generally up. The men's game is generally down. Uh, there are fewer you know kids playing the game compared to uh, previous years. So there is definitely investment needed. Uh, are the players just getting paid too much? Do we need to accept that some guys are going to go overseas to make more money because we can't afford to keep all the top guys? Should they be paying 36.5% of their, their cash just to to pay players' salaries? I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I, I generally like to talk about the stuff that's on the field. But it's not always it's not always possible. Um, it is going to sit wrong with a lot of people that uh, an American firm owns part of what's a pretty iconic New Zealand brand. So, um, yeah. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, they've still got to get sign off from the New Zealand players. New Zealand Rugby Players Association, so we'll see how those kind of negotiations go. Uh, New Zealand Rugby's flat out said this deal has to happen, otherwise strife's going to happen, so it's Brent Impey. Um, some of his other panellists weren't quite so dramatic. But anyway, 
You guys let me know what you reckon about this one. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.